Howdy, it's Tubal Cain once again, and this is the first in a series of many videos regarding me building small dynamos or generators. Now, there's been some interest in people saying you need something that your little engines will operate, and I've long been interested in this, and in fact, I have done a bit of this, but I'm going to, in this uh, video, uh, make a dynamo or generator generator from scratch I'm going to wind the rotor with a magnet wire and uh, and so on now in the past you've seen this Jensen engine and I've run that and that came with this beautiful little I call it a dynamo and what I'm making is going to be loosely based on this this is a permanent magnet with a wound rotor on a beautiful little cast iron base with a light post. So I want to do something like that, but I, I cannot mimic this exactly, and I'm not going to make a casting. I'm going to use uh, uh, fabrication methods because for two reasons. First of all, I have a fair weather foundry and it's the middle of winter, I can't go out there. And the other thing is to make patterns takes longer than uh, j just fabricating something and then I'm only making one of them so uh, I put all that time into making one casting and I could better serve myself and you the viewers and thanks for watching by fabricating so let's talk a little bit about what I have done and what I intend to do I do have a few castings in stock left from other engines so I am going to use this uh, aluminum base as, as the base for the generator. And by the way, you can still buy this generator. But it is uh, quite expensive. I think it's probably $75 or $100 for this. And well worth it. And you'll see how much of an effort it is to do what I'm going to do. And let's face it, possibly two people in the entire world will do this. So there's not going to be any drawings for this. But I'm doing this for entertainment value, both for myself and I understand that around the world there are thousands of you that are uh, armchair machinists and you just like to watch this kind of thing and I don't blame you I like to watch it when other people do it and I particularly like to watch Myford Boy now also watch I am uh, releasing here on my website a complete series of uh, foundry uh, videos uh, it's a course and there's 28 videos and you know eight hours or so of that so look at that I'll also have that available on flash drive here presently so watch all of my videos and you know I've got 600 videos so uh, go back and, and, and watch some of those so alright what have I done here you've seen in the past not too long ago possibly last year where I made this little generator and you saw me running it with one of my little steam engines, and I think Jordan was in that, and it lit up these LEDs here on the top. But this is kind of a pretend generator, because what I did here is I started with a little motor, and it was an erector set motor, just like this. I had two of these that I bought at a garage sale, and I didn't like the look of the plastic. I like the looks of this... Uh, the, the shape and everything, so I rather mimicked that just by uh, machining some aluminum and that worked quite well. I just inserted the motor into that aluminum base. So some of you may or may not have liked that. And then uh, let me talk just a few minutes about these St. Louis motors because these are electric motors that were used in science labs, physics labs, and I suppose general science and I've got a couple of these that came from a school out in uh, eastern Illinois when they closed out and uh, these are pretty old they're called St. Louis Motors because teachers down in St. Louis Missouri came up with this concept here of a modular type motor and this goes back to about 1910 or so and they still make these only in a much more modern version and I believe using neodymium magnets so let me run one of these for you 
Have you ever noticed that I'm a man of many lamentations? And another thing that I lament here is that I can no longer buy a standard dry cell like we did when we were boys. And that's something we always had around and we played with and we experimented. So I'm forced to use regular D cells or a lantern battery. And I got a question for you. Why is it that I can buy an entire lantern? You don't need to answer this question. With LED bulbs cheaper than I can buy the actual battery. All right. What is the St. Louis motor? It's a uh, demonstration motor that uses bar magnets. And these are just very, very weak bar magnets. And we've got them uh, positioned here in these holders. And you can spread them, change the distance. So I want it fairly near the rotor which in this case is also the armature and they're not always the same and there's a little commutator here gotta get this out of the way and rubbing against the commutator of course are two brass brushes and I had to make those those were missing when I bought this thing and this is just uh, in the vertical position it could be horizontal with little uh, sharp points on the shaft and that is the, the bearing and you can adjust the, the uh, wear on the bearing. It's stamped sheet metal and it's made by Welch Scientific and they, bought, they mowed, made most of the equipment used in science labs and schools if you remember that as a kid. And when the teacher got these things out to show oh how I wanted to get my hands on them but he quickly put them back in a glass case and I couldn't touch them but I wanted to but when they did bring this stuff out then they would immediately make us do formulas and other uh, things I didn't want to do I just wanted to play with the motor and now I can because I own several of them but just hooking up uh, a single D cell that's only one and a half volts remember all ma all motors really are just uh, magnets that's all they are magnets out here and a magnet on the armature and when I plug that in there she goes and I can spread these apart and it's still working at that distance now let me show you something else and now with the battery still uh, attached and these are just little uh, neodymium magnets with a hole through them that, although the hole is irrelevant but see how nicely it runs just getting these uh, magnets near it and that's how I'm going to build my dynamo using neodymium magnets but any kind of magnets would work it's just that these are so prevalent and uh, easy to get a hold of and, and now cheap and I like to buy them off of eBay and they come in all different sizes and be sure and watch my several videos on neodymium magnets and by the way you'll be about the first one to watch it because I thought that was pretty neat stuff and nobody watched that video oh I'm lamenting that as well I am also visibly annoyed that several languages appear on virtually every product although we know that a pile is a battery if you studied any electricity. Now the magnets here, I get sidetracked, don't I? We have to have uh, opposite poles. That's a north pole. And this is a south pole. These are really neat. And you can make your own. Now if we put, uh, if I reverse this and I have like poles, it, of course it won't run. See, it quickly stops. This is, of course, a DC permanent magnet motor, direct current. All batteries are direct current. Most of you know that, but we've got some newbies here on electricity. Uh, there is no such thing as an AC battery. Now, we can reverse the direction of any DC motor by reversing uh, the polarity of the battery. And these can also be run on a DC power supply. It doesn't have to be a battery. Notice that it's rotating in the opposite direction.
these motors came in uh, modular pieces and you can see that uh, we got some slots here, some keyholes and if you had the, this accessory, which was a little bit extra, you could put the, uh, the field coil here, which is just a wound magnet, uh, into those holes. And this one requires 3 volts to run. And when I hook up the two D cells, you'll see uh, there it goes. And, and there was enough magnetism to attract those two magnets that were lying near it. You can also change the timing of the commutator here, that is the way the brushes contact uh, the commutator, by, by loosening up this screw and rotating it a little bit. And notice that the speed changes. I'll talk a little bit about that in the motor or the generator that I'm building. I hope I'm not boring you here. Some of you will be intrigued by this simple stuff because this isn't covered so much in schools anymore. So we have uh, electromagnet here instead of permanent magnets. Now as you rotate almost any little device that you might have around the house or in your shop rather, such as this Ryobi grinder, as I rotate that, I, it almost feels like click, click, click. That's because there's permanent magnets in here, so you're feeling the magnetism. So, a lot, a lot of these modern motors are built with permanent magnets. So that's the St. Louis motor. And I think there's even uh, other attachments for this. But I don't own them. This is the Welch Scientific Catalog from 1961, the year I graduated from high school, and it is as thick as a Sears Roebuck catalog, and here's an entire page devoted to the St. Louis motor, describing how it works and showing the different accessories, and that little beauty was $11 back then, but notice that it includes both a set of slip rings down here and a traditional commutator up here. So it's a little bit different model than what I've got. I believe that mine's far older. And then right here it shows the uh, electromagnet attachment and that was $2.75. And you could also buy a four pole armature whereas my armature is uh, a two pole and I think I've probably told you way more than you want to know. But there are pages and pages of interesting little motors, dynamos, and uh, scientific devices in this catalog. And I wish I owned uh, more of them. However, I do have this one. I think you might have seen that in one of my videos. That was $21, which in 19... Uh, 61 that was a lot of money. That's like two hundred dollars now. I Made two prototypes So this is the first one that I made and it's rather crude and notice that this is wood Why wood because it really doesn't matter whether it's wood plastic or metal, but my final one will be metal So don't worry. I am a metal worker, but we just got a piece of plywood here and some uh, aluminum bearings and my wound rotor and holes here for neodymium magnets and I could use one or more. I was experimenting with size and distance and how many magnets that I would need. And remember these work both as a motor and a generator. So I'll run it as a motor here for you presently. But I will wind another armature like that and show you how to do that. And I'm going to fabricate the motor and it's going to look just like this. It won't, it will not have end bells on it. So this is my number one prototype. Let's run it. Now I'm going to run this number one prototype on one and a half volts. It'll run a lot faster on, uh, on three volts, but this is all that it needs. And uh, this one requires a flywheel. I believe it's because the magnets are too powerful.
I, I really need smaller magnets in there, but I'm done with this one other than showing it to you. These are very simple motors to build. A child can build them. The winding of the rotor is a little difficult because there's some machining involved there, but it can be done in different ways. And thank you people out there that send me nice comments. Remember, I can't answer them all. Sometimes there are hundreds and hundreds of them. And uh, do not put a link in there or an email address or they get hidden and they get buried and require approval and sometimes I don't find them for a year or I never find them. So be careful what you put in the, the comments. But you can see how nicely this one runs. Just a little bit of oil on those bearings which are very crude. And of course this one works as a generator as well. But I wasn't satisfied with the performance. It, it put out less than one and a half volts and really uh, d didn't do what I wanted it to do. So I went with plan B, which is a prototype 2. I know I'm talking a lot. And it used, uh, well, it's a different size, and I use different size wire and a uh, different number of turns. But everything that I'm doing here is bagasse and bagasse. There are no drawings. There are no plans. I'm just relying on my past experience and copying some of these other things. But this is really a St. Louis motor, isn't it? Or very similar to the Jensen generator. Alright, let's take a look at number two. And these magnets are too strong. Strong enough so that without the uh, flywheel on there, it almost seems like it locks up. Now if I double the voltage, you know, th this thing really flies. It'll vibrate all over the bench. Here's prototype 2, and I'm going to run that on 3 volts, and it will run without a flywheel. I do have a pulley on there, as you can see. And this will be, was made with bearings like I'm going to use on my final model here. Also brushes, as you can see. I made the commutator longer, and I have a reason for that, and I'll explain that later. I reduced the overall size here. Uh, by about a quarter of an inch because I wanted it to be small enough so it was not too terribly disproportional to some of my engines. Trying to keep it uh, the size that I want. Again, it's made out of wood. I made a boss out here so that I could put different numbers of small magnets in there and they are smaller diameter magnets. And the magnets are uh, that you buy from China are really all in metric, but some of them come close to being uh, in the imperial sizes. Uh, again, I used uh, smaller wire. That's 24 gauge. I used 22 gauge in the other one, I believe it was. I wrote it down someplace. And I can feel it when it gets near the permanent magnets. You can see it jerking a little bit. All right, let's and my brushes are a little too wide. They they are not attractive. That's just. 10,000 shim stock, brass shim stock. Now let me demonstrate something to you if I can. It's running just fine. Keep watching. These are rare earth neodymium magnet. Can you hear it speeding up? So it's fun to experiment with the magnet. Now if I reverse the polarity on the magnet, of course I can stall it out.
surprisingly, it speeds up when I put a magnet on the top. Someone said I overdo my talk about magnetism, but I guess I was I was uh, enamored with it since I was five years old. My dad gave my brother and I a set of those little Scotty dogs. It's a mighty powerful one. Why am I showing you all this experimentation? Because if you build one of these, or, or do this with your children or your boys, both your moms and dads, and a lot of women are watching this, I know that, and thank you. Um, it, it's fun to experiment and, and show what's going on. Now I'll run this little dynamo that, uh, this is the erector set motor really with some LEDs, and you've seen me run that under live steam, and past video but I'm just for the heck of it doing it here with one of my little wobblers and I had to have a large pulley on here to get the speed this does require a rather high speed so this is one of my lead flywheels with a groove machine in it and I'm using one of these spring uh, belts that's way too long I need a shorter one uh, but th these came out of large oil seals on the from heavy equipment Now, do remember that LEDs are uh, sensitive to polarity, so this will uh, light up when I uh, run it in one direction, but running it in the other direction, it will not work, and uh, I always have to experiment to, because I don't remember which is which, but this is the correct rotation naturally, or it wouldn't be lit up. The way some of my engines are set up, they aren't suitable to drive uh, the little generator because there isn't room in here for the belt, so I will have to modify some of them, but this one works just fine, and here's prototype 2 with an LED hooked up to it, and let's see if I can get that running. Well, that concludes this video, which is the introduction to the series on building the dynamo. Be sure and watch the next episode where I start building it, and here's some of the materials I'm going to use. And this, of course, is the prototype, so I'm going to build that out of metal, and uh, that'll be several more parts. So be sure and stay tuned for those videos, and thank you for watching. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.